Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, if you've ever wondered why doctors have men turn their head and cough during a physical, well, want to know more. And just before we get into the video today, I'd like to recommend another great YouTube channel. In many ways, they're very similar to this channel, and if you like us, you're going to like them as well. The channel's called Seeker, and I'd like to specifically recommend a video from them. If you like this video, it's kind of along the same lines. It's How Close Are We to a Cure for HIV? So you'll find a link to that in the description below, and let's get started. Pretty much all guys have been there at some point or another. The doctor asks you to drop your drawers, they slap on some latex gloves, grab your junk, and ask you to turn your head and cough. One imagines this can't exactly be the highlight of the doctor's day, probably ranking up there with the lovely process involved in probing prostates for potential problems. So what exactly are they looking for when they ask you to turn your head and cough? Well, in one word, that would be hernias, but because this is a Today I Found Out video, we're going to dive a lot more into detail. More specifically, they are searching for something called inguinal in a groin hernia, which accounts for about 70 to 80 percent of all hernia cases and is surprisingly common in men and not nearly so much in women. There's a lifetime risk of 27 percent for men versus just 3 percent for women due to the much smaller opening in women's superficial inguinal ring than men's. In fact, inguinal hernia surgery is one of the most common surgeries performed on kids and teenagers. Inguinal hernias happen when certain soft tissues, particularly lower intestines, start to come through the lower abdominal wall through a small hole or tear in said wall. So, well, how exactly does grabbing a guy's balls help the doctor check for this? Well, it turns out that they aren't actually grabbing your balls at all, as is often alluded to in many a comedic skit. What they are doing is poking their fingers up and around the inguinal canal above the testicles. The inguinal canal runs down about where your leg and torso meet and is also the canal the spermatic cord passes through it's attached to the testicles. For women, ligaments pass through this canal to hold the uterus in place. For both sexes, the ilioinguinal nerve passes through the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal has some common weak spots, so doctors are feeling around these weak spots and particularly looking to see if they can feel a bulge or other indications that something is poking through that should not be poking through. Often, this falls into the scrotum. Besides something in a guy's scrotum being there that should not be there, a slight bulge might also be visible where the upper thigh meets the groin. If either of these things happens, well, congratulations, you have an inguinal hernia. As to why the doctor will then have you stand and turn your head and cough, the first part is because the hernia may well disappear when you lay down, with the tissue receding back into your abdominal cavity. The second part of turning your head is simply for sanitary reasons. The doctor's already poking around your junk, they don't want to get coughed on as well. It's not exactly pleasant. As to why they ask you to cough, this creates internal pressure in your abdomen, so if some of the intestines or other soft tissue is protruding through your abdominal wall and into your scrotum, or if there is an opening that that tissue may exploit momentarily when pressure is added, coughing will help the doctor observe these things. Once found, it used to be common for doctors to immediately recommend that the hernia be fixed via surgery in order to avoid potentially life-threatening complications, such as if the intestines became strangled. This can cut off blood supply and potentially result in gangrenous tissue or an infection. This is usually done for minimal cases that don't cause any pain and are reducible. This means that the tissue can be pushed back inside the abdomen when pressure is applied or when the person lays down. Basically, here the tissue is not being incarcerated or obstructed, and the chance of that previously mentioned strangulation is minimal. The recent switch from recommending surgery for everyone who has it to the keep a close eye on it approach is because there is only about a 0.2% chance of the inguinal hernia becoming trapped. This compares to a 10 to 12% chance of people who have this particular hernia surgery ending up with post-surgery herniorrhaphy pain syndrome. This is basically just chronic groin pain that lasts more than a few months after the surgery was performed. So if the hernia isn't already causing pain or isn't too severe in size, the doctor may well simply recommend a treatment plan which won't actually fix it, but will help manage it. And that was some bonus facts. Hernias also commonly pop up in abdominal areas where you've had surgery. These are called incisional hernias. These are the second most common type of hernias after inguinal. The third most common is femoral, which is in the outer groin and occurs mostly in women, particularly pregnant or obese women. Then there are umbilical belly button hernias, which are most common in babies or women who are pregnant, obese, or have given birth to several children. Then there's hiatal, which is upper stomach with the tissues protruding through the diaphragm where the esophagus passes through. This can often feel like heartburn, chest pain, or just indigestion. And now for another bonus fact. For teens particularly, doctors may take advantage of the fact that they have their hands near your balls to do a quick check of your testicles to make sure there aren't any signs of 
testicular cancer or other abnormalities. Testicular cancer is the second most common cancer that teenage boys get, so it's good to check. Although it only occurs in about 0.0003% of teenage boys, so it's not exactly common, but you know, better safe than dead. And now another bonus fact. The word hernia, when it originally popped up, was spelled with an I like this, and that was in the 14th century. It comes from the Latin hernia, meaning protruded viscous or protruding organ. This is probably from the Proto-Indo-European gear, meaning gut or entrail. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, do not forget to check out Seeker and their video, How Close Are We to a Cure for HIV? If you're looking for something else to watch right now, link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.